But you guys all do understand how to do the, you understand the difference between the Western blot and the ELISA test, right? Because senior year, you know, I mean, you know, whether you have to know this for a quiz now, um, you know, that doesn't, you know, obviously you don't, and, you know, I can't force you if I'm not going to give you a quiz on it, but you do need to know this eventually senior year too. Uh, so it's good. It's good practice to know it, um, to you know, to understand it. And if you don't understand it, you should let me know. Um, okay. So I'm going to share my screen um, and not keep talking by myself and have you guys share me as I'm talking, like yesterday. Um, all right. Um, where are we? So you, you guys can all see my screen now, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You can see that, right? What am I hearing now? I think someone's audio is on. All right. Okay. Are you guys ready? We're just going to start with this and then we're going to do, yeah, just this much. Okay. Not too bad today, right? And then I'll let you guys go. Do I have a worksheet for this actually? I need to check. I don't think I have a worksheet for this. Maybe I do. Um, all right. I, yeah, for, you don't have to do a worksheet for it. Um, what am I doing? I'm going to share my slides. Okay. So you guys can all see this. And you can't see me. Okay. So um, what are some of our defenses against viruses? So in terms of our immune, like in terms of technology and in terms of our immune system. So first of all, to prevent yourself from even getting a virus to begin with, you can have a vaccine, take a vaccine, and that's why a lot of people get vaccines. It was a huge breakthrough um, thanks to, yeah, the small pass vaccine was the first vaccine, right? And then um, other ones like polio, and then, you know, obviously measles, mumps, rubella, um, you know, and influenza vaccines, HPV vaccines, and now they even, um, you know, they're searching for the COVID, you know, vaccine. It takes a long time to develop them, though. Um, another thing is, so even once you do have a virus, you can take antiviral medications um, that will sort of interfere with the virus um, life cycle and replicating and stuff. Um, or, again, worse comes to worse, even if you don't have a vaccine, even if you don't get antivirals, your immune system is pretty strong. So it usually can recover, you know, um, and it couldn't fight these pathogens, but it sometimes takes a while and is like uncomfortable because like in that process, you know, all your cells, your, your blood vessels are dilating because you're trying to get all these white blood cells in that vicinity to combat that virus, which often leads to like heat, right? You get like kind of like, you get a fever. Um, sometimes you feel like really uncomfortable because like there's like this like histamine is being released. So it kind of like just makes you feel all swollen and all, you know, kind of like lethargic um, because your body's like working hard to defend itself, right? So in any case, immune system, like last, you know, worst, kind of last resort, you, still, you always have your immune system, which is why we're going to talk about that at the end. Um, so how do vaccines work? Do you guys know how vaccines are made? Do you guys remember what we talked about with the cowpox? Um, or the uh, all, I, all I know is they take like a weakened or dead strain of um, that bacteria virus mm -hmm. and inject that into people so you can build up antibodies to that. Yes, perfect. So um, you said weakened or dead, which is true, but there are four different ways to make a vaccine. So it could be the first one we're going to talk about is the one that was the cowpox versus smallpox, right? Cowpox and smallpox are very similar organisms. They're not really organisms because they're not living, but there you can take a similar, if it's a bacteria, for example, you can take a similar organism that maybe isn't quite as lethal and inject that one just like as is, right? So it's not weakened or dead. It's just a similar one that's not as lethal. And um, then you develop immunity to that one. You build up antibodies to that one. And then when the actual organism or the actual harmful, threatening one comes in, you you already have this like army to like like you know neutralize it immediately, so you don't even get sick from it, right? So that was an ex example of that was um, cowpox and smallpox. That's how the smallpox vaccine was made, right? All right, and exactly um, as we do said. Right, you can get an attenuated or weakened version of that 
virus or that bacteria. And then, you know, really all your immune system needs, what is your immune system looking for to create antibodies? How do you create antibodies? Um, if there's like traces of antigens in your blood, so then you have to fight it off. Exactly. You need the antigen, which is like part of like the virus or the bacteria. So then your body is looking for those. So even if those are present in a weakened or, you know, um, version of that, the pathogen, still your body can build immunity, right? It can also be like a totally killed version that still has the antigens on its surface or something, right? Or you can take even just a subunit of one of the antigens. So usually like the antigens that are sticking out of the surface of like a virus or a bacteria, what are they made of? What are those like extensions coming out of viruses or extensions coming out of bacteria sometimes? Glycoproteins. Glycoproteins, exactly, good. So if we take, even if we don't take the whole, the whole organism, or the whole virus, but we take even just like one glycoprotein or a series of glycoproteins that are characteristic to that, you know, to that virus or to that bacteria, and then we inject those, those can also still stimulate an immune response because they're still antigens, right? So these are the four different ways that you can make vaccine that vaccines are made from a similar organism, from a weakened version, from a totally killed version, or just like one like sort of portion of that virus or bacteria or pathogen, right? Okay. Okay, I'm going to move on. So those are vaccines, right? And the idea is to stimulate your immune system so that when, when the actual thing comes in, you're not going to be harmed by it. Antivirals are basically like you take them pretty much once you've already gotten infected, right? And then once, once so you have the virus in your system, Right, and then basically they'll target the viral envelope, right? Which is remember that outside portion of the virus that's made of what again? What's that envelope made of? Lipids. Exactly, lipids. Right, it's made of lipids. It's kind of just like a like a cell membrane almost, right? So they'll you can target the viral envelope. It can also you can also interfere with viral in uh, viral. Um, infection by just like blocking the host cell receptors, right? If you have something that's like going to be a competitive, um, you know, a competitive, um, like something that will bind to the receptors already so that the viruses cannot bind there anymore, then that's clearly going to, um, you know, stop the, um, stop the infection, right? And then also you can also in inhibit the means of replication, especially if those viruses like HIV or like um, retroviruses, they are dependent on their own enzymes. Remember, they carry their own enzymes around with them in their core. So like if you do something like a protease, if you apply some sort of protease that's going to like dissolve those, those um, enzymes inside their core, then they're not going to be able to replicate because they need those enzymes, those specific enzymes in order to reverse transcribe, right? So then they can't reproduce, even though they are inside the host and then have the cell, all the cell machinery to their, you know, accessible to them. They still can't because they don't have that enzyme. Okay. Would that um, virus still be able to be transmitted? Transmitted. Um. Well, think about so like if you're HIV. And you have, you're carrying your enzyme, your enzyme reverse transcriptase, which is going to allow you to then replicate your DNA, your, your RNA into DNA, and then make your proteins to make more of yourself, right? If your reverse transcriptase has been interfered with by some sort of, you know, antiviral medication, then no, you can't reproduce. And so you can't, then, then you wouldn't make tons of copies of yourselves, and then you wouldn't explode to go infect other cells. Okay. Right? So that's like a you know major way that they are dealing with um, you know like HIV infection. You're trying to like basically st you know decrease the rate at which HIV viruses are spreading, so that the T cells themselves can you know build up more, so that they can you know it's always like you know because they're basically destroying your T cells, right? So yeah, that would stop the the process. Okay. 
Other drugs that inhibit capsid assembly, right? So those are also antivirals, right? Remember a capsid is made of proteins, right? And that's like sort of on the, like on the outside part of the core of the um, virus. So um, if you can prevent those proteins from assembling, maybe, you, do you remember like when proteins are made, are they completely ready to be used like right after translation? Primary structure of a protein is what? No. Uh, well, they still have to have the caps, right? And tails added on. No, that's transcription. You're thinking of like the mRNA transcript. I'm talking about a protein. Oh, whoops. The proteins made after translation. So it's a series of amino acids. That's the primary structure of a protein, right? Is that ready to go and do its job yet or no? No. No. What does it need to do before it can actually be a functional protein? Does it need to be activated? It needs to be activated. Good. So it needs to be activated either by you can by by folding it, right? You might have to phosphorylate it, like add a phosphate group. You might have to um, you know, there are a lot of other ways that you might need to you know, so it, it, yeah, it can't just, the, the single, like, like, you know, 2D amino acid string is not going to do anything. It needs to start folding and then, um, you know, like joining with other subunits. So, yeah, basically, if you can inhibit any of those steps from the protein, like becoming a functional protein, then you can um, inhibit the capsid from forming itself, right? Okay, good. So you guys see how all these units are kind of like building on each other. I hope that you're like thinking about these things. Like once I say capsids are made of proteins, you should be thinking about the things that proteins, like, you know, when we talked about proteins, like what characteristics of proteins, you know, like translation, you know, you should know that they're made by translation and that those are encoded for by mRNA, which were encoded by DNA, right? Maybe you guys aren't thinking that in that depth. But anyway, okay, so... Let me, I just want to show you this video about the immune response. It's pretty cool. I think that this video is well done too. Um, but it's basically like what happens in our bodies, like biologically when an intruder, like a pathogen, and in this case, I guess it would mainly be a virus, right? That we're talking about, but also it's true for bacteria or any types of like antigens that are foreign, right? Um, I want you guys to watch this real quick and see, All right? To fly a rocket ship, you need to be an optimist. No astronaut. Our body has a powerful army that protects it from various types of threats. These threats can come in the form of mechanical injuries, the entry of germs, or the entry of other foreign particles like dust. This personal army is called the immune system. Every day, we encounter a huge number of bacteria, viruses, and other disease-causing organisms. However, we don't fall ill every other day, which is due to our immune system, an army of cells that is always roaming our body, ready to ward off any attack. The immune system can be broadly divided into two parts, innate and adaptive immunity. Innate immunity, or nonspecific immunity, is the body's first natural defense to any intruder. This system doesn't care what it's killing. Its primary goal is to prevent any intruder from entering the body. And if it does enter, then the immune system neutralizes this intruder. It doesn't differentiate between one pathogen and another. Kind of violent there, sorry. The yeah. first component of this defensive system is our skin. Any organism trying to get into the body is stopped by the skin, our largest organ, which covers us. Secondly, there is the mucus lining of all our organs. The sticky, viscous fluid traps any pathogens trying to get past it. These are the two physical barriers. However, we also have chemical barriers, such as the lysozyme in the eyes, or the acid in the stomach, which can kill pathogens trying to gain entry. The genitourinary tract and other places have their own normal flora or microbial community. These compete with pathogens for space and food, and therefore also act as a barrier. The next line of defense is inflammation, which is done by mast cells. These cells are constantly searching for suspicious objects in the body. 
when they find something, they release a signal in the form of histamine molecules. These alert the body and blood is rushed to the problem area. This causes inflammation and also brings leukocytes or white blood cells, which are soldiers in our body's cellular army. Once they come, all hell breaks loose. Sometimes, however, the intruder may not be a germ, but rather a harmless thing like a dust particle. The body still causes a full immune reaction to this intruder, which is how allergic reactions occur. In the fortress of our body, the leukocytes are VIPs. They have an all-access pass to the body, except, of course, to the brain and spinal cord. Our leukocytes come in many types. Those that belong to the innate system are the phagocytes. These cells can either patrol your body, like the neutrophils, or they can stay in certain places and wait for their cue. Neutrophils are the most abundant cells. They patrol the body and can therefore get to a breach site very quickly. These cellular soldiers kill the infectious cell and then die, which leads to the formation of pus. There are also the big bad wolves, or the macrophages. These cells are like hungry, ravenous monsters who simply engulf unwanted pathogens. Instead of roaming freely in our blood, they are collected in certain places. These cells can consume about 100 pathogens before they die, but they can also detect our own cells that have gone rogue, such as cancer cells, and kill them too. Beyond that, we also have the natural killer cells. These cells can efficiently detect when our own cells have gone rogue or are infected with, say, a virus. NKCs detect a protein produced by normal cells called the major histocompatibility complex, or MHC. Basically, whenever a cell isn't normal, it stops producing this protein. The NKCs move around constantly, checking our cells for this type of deficiency. And when they find an abnormal cell, they simply bind to it, release chemicals, and destroy it. The last cells of our innate immune system are the dendritic cells. These are found in places that come in contact with the outside environment such as the nose and lungs. They are the link between our innate and adaptive immune systems. They eat a pathogen and then carry information about it to our adaptive immune system cells. This information is produced and shared in the form of antigens. Antigens are the traces that pathogens leave behind. They are molecules found on the surface of pathogens that can be detected by our adaptive immune system for recognition. The dendritic cells pass on this information to our T cells. However, macrophages can also perform this function. Now, there is also the adaptive or acquired immune system. This system is more efficient as it can differentiate between different types of pathogens. It has two main components, T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes. T cells come into play when an infection has already occurred, thus bringing about the cell-mediated immune response. B cells join the fight when the pathogens have entered, but haven't yet caused any disease. This is called the humoral immune response. Some T cells take signals from the dendritic cells or macrophages and are thus called helper T cells. They perform two key tasks, forming effector T cells, which are basically cells that cycle through the body and call in the cavalry, namely other white blood cells. Helper T cells also form memory T cells, which keep a record of this antigen for future reference. Sometimes, some cells of our body know that they have lost the battle. They have become heavily infected with pathogens, so there is no hope left for them. At this point, the immune system brings out the cytotoxic T cells. These cells rush over and perform a mercy killing for the infected and dying cell. Furthermore, we have the B cells. They produce chemicals called antibodies, which fit on the antigens of pathogens much like how a lock and key fit together. These antibodies crowd around a pathogen and act like tags. They signal the macrophages to come and kill the marked pathogen. B cells also produce memory B cells when they encounter an antigen. The B and T memory cells jointly maintain a record of all encountered infections and thus strengthen and solidify the body's immune response to these infections in the future. Our innate response is quicker, though nonspecific. It gets into action within hours and is pretty strong. However, when things get out of hand, the innate system calls for help from the acquired immune system. This system can take days to mount a response, but the next time we encounter that pathogen, it won't make us get sick. In short, 
Every day that we spend being healthy is all thanks to our immune system, so it definitely deserves our respect. All right. Mm. All right. Did you guys get all that? <laughs> Do you keep it all straight? No? All right. Well, we'll go over it real quick. Um, so the immune system is divided into how many different parts? Two. Two parts. What are the two parts? It was like innate and adaptive or something like that. Mm -hmm. Good. So the innate is our like non-specific one, right? So no matter what it is, if it's dust or if it's a pathogen, it's, you're always going to react the same way. So what was the first, the main, the main like organ that is involved in the innate immune system that will stop pathogens from coming in to begin with? Like all pathogens, any possible type of intruder? The skin. The skin, right? That, that's like the main first line of defense, right? And then what was the second line of defense after that? After like the, if it does happen to break the skin and come in, then what's the rest of the innate immune system like involved with? The mucus. Well, there's mucus. Good. There's tears. There's like lysozyme and tears. Um, good. That's another like sort of physical, actual physical barrier. Good. And then beyond that, then what, then what, who gets involved? It's basically like, you know, a bunch of white, uh, white blood cells, right, um, that are coming to this rescue, um, mainly like macrophages, right? And we'll go over each single one um, uh, together, so in, in a second. But anyway, so the innate, the innate immune system is nonspecific, so it's like all pathogens, doesn't matter what you are, or if you've had it before, or if you've never had it before, just like blocks, tries to block or attack anything at all. The adaptive immune system is very specific to like something that you've seen before, right? So instead of just like having macrophages that are like indiscriminately eating all these pathogens, the adaptive immune system is like when a single antibody that's like complementary to the antigen binds specifically to that one type of antigen, right? Okay. So, and then the, so the innate immune defenses that happens like almost instantaneously or at least within a few hours. Right. Um, so that's very quick. Right. Skin, tears, mucus, wax in our ears. Right. Um, those are all examples of like those first lines of defense. But if the pathogen does manage to enter, then we'll have the mast cells. Do you guys remember what those are responsible for releasing? It was like a hormone. It was like something with H, I think. Good. Histamine. It, they release histamine and histamine essentially like it causes the blood vessels to get larger so that it can allow more white blood cells to come into that area. Right. Okay. Then there are also the neutrophils, right, which they basically like go around patrol and they engulf pathogen pathogens. So they're like macro, um, they, they, they perform phagocytosis and they also sort of like, just like keep an eye out for foreign objects or foreign things, right? The macrophages and the dendritic cells, again, they also just go around and chomp on all the um, pathogens. But then these are like the crucial link between the innate immune system and the um, adaptive immune system, because not only do they go ahead and eat the pathogens, but then they also like display those path the antigens from the pathogens on their surface, which is kind of weird. Like imagine like eating something and then like sort of like parading around, like displaying what you just ate, right? That's kind of like what they do. And then by doing that, then the T cells can see, oh wow, these guys have this antigen on their surface. And the T cells then respond and like um, based on those antigens that are presented here, right? There are these, um, these, these, um, uh, these cells are also responsible for the release of this, these materials called cytokines, which essentially they stimulate the, the release of more white blood cells from the bone marrow, right? So they send out these messages being like, come on, we need more white blood cells. Let's make some and let's release them from the bone marrow, okay? Because that's where white blood cells are produced, okay? 
And then there are these natural killer cells. These are also nonspecific. Um, and they also release cytokines. They cause the release of cytokines. And they also, so these natural killer cells were the ones that detect self or non-self, a self, non-self cells, or they detect damaged cells, right? So basically, did you see that thing, the MHC receptor? Normal cells have a functioning major histocompatibility complex, right? That was what MHC stands for. They have a normal MHC receptor. Non-cells, so antigen cells or antigen viruses, uh, antigens on viruses obviously don't have an MHC receptor. And cancerous cells lack this MHC receptor. So then the cells can be like, wait a minute, you don't have an MHC, MHC receptor? I'm going to kill you, basically, right? Because you need to neutralize things that aren't normal functioning things, right? And so the natural killer cells will detect ones that don't have this MHC receptor, and then they'll cause them to basically um, uh, undergo apoptosis, right? Do you guys remember what apoptosis is? It's the killing of the um, affected or damaged cells when they can't be repaired. Exactly. It's just like that. Cell, cell suicide, right? They just like go ahead and kill themselves when they're damaged or beyond repair. All right. So, and all of these, basically, like, just think of all these cells. Like, if you have a cut or something and, like, this bacteria or this virus, like, enters it, all these guys, like, just, like, come flooding into this area, right? So, if you're suddenly getting all these cells in this area that not, normally doesn't have that many cells, it's going to cause what is called the inflammatory response because it gets, like, really hot and, like, crowded and swollen, right? Because your blood vessels are getting larger to let all these guys come in and do their work, okay? So this is the innate response, right? Okay, sorry, that was like a little delayed. Why are these all in the wrong places? Anyway, we talked about this, right? That this is the link between the innate and adaptive, and we talked about the histamine causes the blood vessels to dilate. All right. Um, I'm going to move on. So the adaptive immune system, this was the one that's more specific. And do you guys remember with which cells, which types of cells these are, this is mediated by? The adaptive part. The, the T cells? Lymphocytes. The lymphocytes, right? And they're T cells and... B cells. B cells, right? Okay. So basically, this is also delayed because, you know, it takes a while for these for the macrophages and the dendritic cells to then go ahead and display the antigens and then for the T cells that correspond to those antigens to be activated and then produce themselves. So basically what happens is like, we have all these different T cells in our body, right? Pretty much complementary to any possible antigen that could come in, right? So it takes a while for the antigen, the, so the, the macrophages and the dendritic cells that have the antigens on their surface, they're gonna just like go around and bump into random T cells. The T cells that have the corresponding, like the, the, the complementary like molecular structure that would bind to that antigen, those, as soon as they do bind to that antigen, then they immediately start replicating in like bulk. So they like go crazy, they go crazy like with the replication. And that takes like a while for this to occur. So it's a sort of delayed response. But basically, um, and, and those T cells then that are now replicating are going to be specific only to that antigen, right? They're not going to just affect, uh, you know, attack anything. They only attack that one antigen, right? So they're called lymphocytes. Um, the B cells are the ones that make the antibodies, right? And then they're called B cells because they originate in the bone marrow and then they stay in the bone marrow like the whole time. That's why the B is highlighted there, right? Originate and stay in the bone marrow. And those are the ones that make the antibodies, right? So think of B, bone marrow, bot, antibodies, right? B cells, right? Okay. And then the other ones, they're, um, oh, and the antibodies are those Y-shaped proteins that are complementary to the antigen that essentially like deactivate the antigen by like marking the cell or the, whatever the antigen containing entity is. And then like the cytotoxic C cells will come in like, or the, the phagocytes will come in like eat them, right? Okay. Um, okay, bind to antigens and label them for disposal, right? 
All right. So then the T cells are, remember there are different types of T cells, right? So these are called T cells because they originate in the bone. So all of them originate in the bone marrow. So lymphocytes come from bone marrow, but then the T cells actually migrate to the thymus and they mature in the thymus, which is like this other organ. Um, okay. So that's why the T and B. And then remember, B, create the antibodies. The T cells are the ones that just start to recognize the antibodies, right? And, um, uh, you know, and then reproduce a lot so that they could then, like, remember those antibodies to, to help um, mount this defense, right? They're helper T cells, and those are the ones, and, oh, the cytotoxic T cells, right? And then there are the memory T cells. And do I have explanation? I do have. So, oops, sorry. The helper T cells are the ones that just call in for more, like, reserves, right? The cytotoxic ones are the ones that destroy the infected cells. And then the memory ones are the ones that just keep the record of the antigen so that in the future they can easily, you know, defend themselves and so that you won't get sick ever again from that same antigen. All right, so this is like how the whole this whole immune system process like works. That's the whole idea of, you know, even um, an antigen that's weakened or killed or just a part of the virus or, uh, you know, a part of a bacteria that still creates this whole response each time, right? Um, sorry, each new, you know, like each time it's first exposed. So that's why this is so important to get your vaccines because then you can like develop. It takes a while, you know, so that's why sometimes have like people have a slight fever after they get a vaccine. But, um, you know, then they'll, you'll forever, for the rest of your life, you have these like specific cells that are going to target these antigens that might come in. Okay. And then immunity. Um, so act, active immunity is when you do, when you go through this process yourself, right? So you go through, you get exposed to the vaccine, to a vaccine, or you get exposed to the actual pathogen by getting the disease once, right? And then you have active immunity because your own body is forming all these cells, right? So you're doing it. You're actively producing it, right? Do you guys know what passive immunity would mean then? It's okay. not directly from the body. Good. So where are you getting it? So if you can't, if you're not producing your own antibodies to it, then where are you getting your defenses from? The vaccines. Um, even if you get it from a vaccine, you're still producing your own antibodies, right? So like even a vaccine, like a vaccinated person is still, their own body is still creating the defense against that, the, you know, the whatever intruder was injected from the vaccine, right? So, but the idea of passive immunity is a little different. It's like your body itself isn't making the antibodies. You're getting the antibodies from someone else. So... Think of like, you know, go back way into early life. Who do you think you're getting your immunity from? Your parents. Okay. Which parent in particular? Your mother. Your mother. Your mother, right? And this is like why, you know, I mean, you should never take your mothers for granted, right? Um, you, you know, basically you have to, if you can't produce your own antibodies yet, or if you haven't produced your own antibodies, like you're, you know, a little baby, the womb is a completely sterile environment, right? The first exposure you have to any sort of pathogens or any sort of potential, um, you know, antigens is when you come out of the birth canal and you get like coated in, you know, your mother's like bacteria from, you know, like, and then, then you can at least have that coat of defense. But, you know, basically other than that, you've never been exposed to bacteria before, right? Or, or viruses, but suddenly you're now in this like environment and you, like your immune system has not been developed at all because you've been inside this like sterile environment. So you need to start producing antibodies to stuff, right? But, you know, how can you uh, without getting sick right away, right? So where do you get it? You get it from, from breastfeeding. That's like one of the major places that you can get antibodies um, indirectly. Or, or I guess it's directly. You're getting it directly, but you're not producing them yourselves. You're just like eating them, right? And then another way is you can like, so for, for rabies, there's actually like a vaccine, not a vaccine, but it's like that you inject someone else's antibodies to help you fight rabies. So you don't produce your own 
antibodies yourself, but you're getting someone else's antibodies. And that's another like sort of thing that they're exploring for COVID-19, right? Like they're trying to see if like you, they can, you know, isolate antibodies in people who have recovered from the, from the, you know, from the virus and then possibly use that as a therapeutic treatment for other people who are suffering from it. Right. Which is kind of an interesting technique, but that's like, you know, that, that would be a, an example of passive immunity because you're not making your own antibodies yourself. And then in some people, you know, um, they, they'll get total bone marrow transplants themselves, right? Because they can't, for some reason, maybe their own bone marrow is compromised so that they would need a transplant of someone else's bone marrow. And again, what, 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 what two kinds of cells are produced in bone marrow? The B and the T cells. B and T cells in particular, but pretty much like all immune cells are produced in the bone marrow, right? So if you are getting someone else's, you're borrowing someone else's, basically that's, you know, you're not producing your own. So that's considered passive immunity as well. So all these, there are all these like sort of um, these methods of getting, you know, you can produce them yourself or you can use someone else's pre-produced, you know, defenses. And those should help you too. Okay. Any questions? No. All right. So let me give you, I want to give you this link to, um, actually I, maybe I'll post it on, I'll, I'll post it on classroom too. Um, but let me just, Oh, I should, I should even post it. Um, it's, it's this, um, documentary basically about, um, vaccination, right? Like the importance of, vaccines and stuff. It's called Calling the Shots. Have you ever have you guys ever seen this before? No. No. So it's it's like about an hour long and it's in place of a quiz. And there I there there are some questions that I want you guys to um to answer with it. Okay. And here's the link and I will just paste the link on classroom right now. Where's my classroom? This is our classroom, right? Okay, I'm just gonna post that there. And then I will add the um, the the worksheet for it too, right? So today vaccines, this one, okay. What? Wait a minute. I should actually post that as an assignment, shouldn't I? All right, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna repost that. Never mind. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's what will be for your homework for this weekend. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? No, I actually might have a um, I might have a, a worksheet for the immune system. Did I give you guys the viruses worksheet for the whole unit? Yes or no? Did I give you any viruses worksheet at all? We got one. Yeah, we got one that covered like yesterday and the day before, I think. I think that it only works. goes up to the protein covering, right? No, we, we did on like, we, there was vector viruses and yesterday stuff on it. And then yesterday, what was, okay. So, so retro viruses, HIV. Okay. Did it have the the defenses against viruses, the ways to make a vaccine, the brain um, the immune system? No. No. Okay. What are cytokines? No. What is MHC? Depend I, uh, uh, like vectors, transmission, uh, mm -hmm. light tick, lysogenic cycles. Mm, okay. That's just I guess this last this last page didn't you didn't have this last page right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna post that too, just for your own edification. You don't have to do that part of it, okay? You guys didn't have the last pages for that. Okay, yeah, uh -huh. didn't. Yeah, I see. I see that. Okay, so I will post. Yeah, there's an there's an extra like you know a few questions, just if you want to do that, but you don't have to, right? And then otherwise, you guys should do um, you know just fill out the ten questions from the video and watch the video. Okay.
right, and I'll post the link and I'll post the questions right now again, right? Okay, all right, and so you'll do that, you'll complete that by Monday at class time, right? Okay. Any questions, no? All right, have a great weekend, you guys. See you on Monday. Have a good one. All right, bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye.